Good morning. I'm almost done time. <sighs> I'm just sitting here getting myself grounded as usual. Welcome to the playground. <laughs> I feel like on my other shows, I'm always really good about like, being professional in this one. We're all just friends, right? Batman hangs out in the corner. I'm barely put together. <laughs> I'm barely awake. I slept nine hours straight. Good morning. I slept so hard and I dreamt like crazy stuff all night and I woke up feeling like I must have gotten drunk last night. I woke up very disoriented trying to figure out where I am this morning. Hi, Geraldine. <laughs> I know you're in the same boat as me. So, uh, good morning. I'm settling myself in, trying to figure out who I am, what I am, what am I doing this morning. <laughs> so you get my true self. It's funny that that's what I put on there. It's like... We're so good, I think, sometimes at putting on a mask, trying to be something that we're not. My dreams were really pointed at that last night, and they were very weird. <laughs> good morning, Sherry. Good morning, Wendy. So I wonder how many of us are feeling it. Somebody tell me quick, because I was just thinking maybe this is a possibility. Have we suddenly popped into retrograde? Is it time? I know there's been a lot of planets in retrograde. <laughs> But I think Mercury is about to hit us. And if it hasn't, it's hitting us now. <laughs> Hi, Carol. I can always feel it. It's crazy. It's crazy how sensitive we're becoming. How sensitive we have always been. How difficult it has been to be so sensitive. And yet, um, guess what? <laughs> we ain't seen nothing yet. That was just the edge of the iceberg. The edge? Is that correct? Whatever. <laughs> so... You don't know anything about retrograde, Wendy. That's okay. I don't either. I just know when something feels like it's going backwards. <laughs> Today, I feel like, wow, what was I dreaming? I had the wildest dreams last night, and it must have been just releasing stuff. So, hi, Scarlet. Good morning, Julie Kiss. <laughs> I love all these friends that pop in in the morning. How are all of you today? <sighs> I'm just trying to settle in and relax. After a long night's sleep, I rarely get nine hours of solid sleep anymore. I didn't move. So I'm still stuck in my sleep state, I think. I literally woke up this morning. I don't know if it's real. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was so far out of it. I have, I usually wake up by 6.30 or 7, so I have time to pull myself together. I, um, hi Deborah. My alarm went off. I have my alarm as a backup, just in case I'm sleeping really good. I want to make sure that I get up by eight at the latest in case I'm having a really good night's sleep. My alarm went off and woke me up, but at the same time that my alarm went off, hi Deborah, um, I heard the voice of an older lady, I think, <laughs> really grumpy voice, like yelling something. I think she was yelling at her dog and it was like, why is this lady waking me up? Because it was going off at the exact same time as my alarm. And I think, <laughs> at first I thought, do I have a visitor here in the house? What's going on? I think that maybe the neighbor lady, her dog got away. <laughs> I think it was actually real. That's how far out of it I was. I'm like, is that real or is that a dream? I still don't fully know. Hi, Charles. Charlie. Good busy day ahead. Yes, I have good busy days too. It's It feels good to be doing this kind of work, like to keep getting called. My private practice is growing in leaps and bounds. So there's been a lot of sessions and it's been a lot busier than it has been for a few months. And we had kind of a, a sit still, be still for a while, sort yourself out, figure out what you're doing. And now it's like, okay, no more being still. <laughs> Time to get to work and so I've been feeling that a lot and then and then it's the reminder to remember to dance to remember to play to remember to be still to don't try to do this all by myself kind of thing like, um, we can't do we can't have a spiritual practice we can't we can't do the work that we're being called to do all by ourselves it's not up to us to do all this it's not up to me to give you from my perspective it's up to me to sit still and be quiet and allow the angels guide source whoever it is to filter through so i'm the vessel so it feels good to have that reminder i'm appreciating it right now i actually have this very calm thank you for coming in kind of feeling it's not all up to me because we can really 
we can put ourselves as humans. I have been known to be quite a workaholic. When I get started on things, I can, I can put 15 hours a day in easy and forget that I need rest, forget that I need to play. So we're not supposed to be coming out of this virus the same as we went into it. We all have different, a different perspective than we used to have. We have all kinds of things still happening. The virus is not gone yet, so it's still affecting us. The energies are still crazy. There's a lot going on in the, on the planet. And so the reminder is, is to, to uh, you know, you were given a time out for a reason. Can you remember? In those difficult times when we, when things get so, they're changing so fast, or we've lost someone, or we've had a traumatic event, it's in those times that we have always, down through history, most of us will turn to God or turn to some kind of a belief structure because we, we realize then that as far down as we are, we can't do this all by ourselves. And not only can we not do it all by ourselves, but we didn't come here to do it all by ourselves. <laughs> we brought a team, and that team is so active. It's like right there. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> like I'm right here. I'm right here. I'm right here. That's a better place to point. We are right here whenever you need us. Whenever you need us, don't forget to ask. Even if it's just for a good night's sleep. Don't forget that you have a whole team. I almost feel them rubbing my shoulders right now, like a prize fighter. <laughs> You're doing an excellent job. Let us support you. Let us take care of you. So that's where I am today. We've got a good size group. Thank you for joining me. I'm just going to go ahead and put on these goofy. I broke my glasses, other ones completely yesterday. These are quite dirty. Wow. <laughs> I'm ridiculous. Hey, guys, could you just give me back my eyesight so I don't have to worry about these glasses all the time? It sure would make my life easier. It's not easy being old. No, Batman. He stands guard over us, doesn't he? They're still dirty. That's okay. I am tired, Wendy. I'm sorry. <laughs> I am tired today. Thank you for noticing. I'm, I, I, I think I just slept so hard, and I can't seem to shake it off yet. I need to get out. My Here's my thing. I preach on it all the time, and I'm not doing it. I haven't been out in nature hardly at all this week. It's like we have all these things going on, and if it's not, if it's not, you know, working from home, it's also di you know, family dinners in a restaurant, being in a city, and I really have been. My body has been telling me I have an extra girl here now. I have two girls living with me, and. So as soon as I catch a break, they want to go shopping or something. And the reminder is, is, don't forget to take your walks. Don't forget to go out in those trees. Don't forget that you live here in the mountains and that you can go sit on a rock in your yard and you can ground your energy and you can be calm. So I do feel a little tired today, but that's my own fault. It's my own fault for not getting out there and taking care of my body in the way that it needs to be taken care of. Because, yes, we're spiritual beings, but we still have physical selves. <laughs> My physical self is just needing a good shoulder rub down <laughs> and, and some time, lots of fresh water and barefoot in the yard or take a walk out in these beautiful mountains and maybe just say, okay, I got to lay it all down today. I need to spend, I haven't even been eating good. I have been just grabbing stuff on the run. So it's my own fault. I'm giving myself a good talking to. Let's see. Yeah, Paul would know. <laughs> I could just watch some of Paul's videos and he would tell me. <laughs> I don't even have to bug him. He would, he would, the show that we watched last night that I had to sit in on with, I, that sounds bad, that I sat in on with Michelle Anders was talking about retrograde too. And I'm pretty sure they said some stuff about current retrogrades and Mercury coming up in retrograde this week. That's what I'm pulling from. <clears throat> Let's see, what do I got? Thank you for sharing, Wendy, because I don't share anymore. I just decided I'm going to sit here and talk with whoever's here with me. And then I share afterwards because it helps if it's a people, if it brings people here during the live show. But people get angry with me when they can't, when I don't communicate with them. Carol Allen, so nice to see you. Yes, Carol Allen said yes. So I was remembering correctly. Mercury is in retrograde. Remember that when you feel a little bit weird. My dreams were strange. I always know when we're going into some... Mercury especially really affects me for some reason. So my dreams were weird last night. Really weird. Let's see. 
I'll be okay, Wendy. I just gotta I gotta recharge a little bit. I promise. Good busy day ahead, Julie. Very good. Charles, Charles, nice to see you. Charlie, I should say. Thank you, Wendy. It is, it is building. Things are building. It's good. It's just a matter of relaxing into it and getting used to being busy again. I've been on vacation for a very long time. Julie, I woke up at 4.44 a.m., watched replay. Ah, that's so sweet. That was a really good show yesterday. It was emotional for me. I think you're talking about Silent Mystics. It was a good show. Um, Barbara was very interesting, and I think that we, Geraldine and I, took it to, all three of us, it went to a different place than we that's what I love about working on spirit. It's going to go where it's going to go. Every I kind of really enjoy the show in the morning because I have no idea. You know, it's like I'm just going to turn myself over, see where it wants to go, whatever you guys have going on. Maybe we build a conversation from it, and then it turns into a meditation. So that's Silent Mystics too. yesterday just kind of went in the direction that it went. Just some of the questions that we saw, some of Barbara's stories, you know, it just kind of, fills in the blanks. So it's really fun and interesting. How's my paper coming along? It's not. <laughs> so funny, Deborah. So funny you should say that. I haven't even decided what I want to write my thesis on yet. I still have to turn in the paper that says this is what I'd like to write my, th my thesis on so that they can say yes, that's approved, and then I can start writing it. There will come a time when that thesis is going to write itself. I promise. It was the same thing with Anchor Light. It was a uh, and I, I really want to spend time, you know, allowing for the flow in whatever direction that spirit needs me to go. It could be another book, even. It is another book. I get it all. Oh, Geraldine. Jupiter, Saturn, Mercury, Venus, Neptune, and Pluto. <laughs> no wonder. <laughs> like, everything's in retrograde. Is there anything that's not in retrograde? <laughs> that's, that's the question. I'm not really, I, okay, I'm not sorry. <laughs> my hair is doing weird things. It's coming up over my ear. It's time for another haircut. It's distracting me. Go back. I can't go back to bed. I have other stuff. <laughs> There's a couple hours in between later that I will find some time for some rest. And my schedule's pretty tight today. It's really okay. It's, I know I look really tired, but I slept for nine hours straight. So I don't think I really need more sleep. I just think that I need to go stand in the grass for a few minutes. And later, take some time out in nature. Take my good walk. I'm missing those walks. I'm very good for putting your do not disturb on last night. I do that too with Charles. Somebody else put it on those. I was like, what you're saying? Belinda, nice to see you. Mine too. <laughs> Good, Julie. I'm glad you guys are enjoying that show. It's really fun to do it, and we just never know what's going to come out. I'm actually looking forward next week to Sharon Rhea, even though we've seen a lot of her on a lot of shows talking about racial injustice and counseling, family counseling, and kind of changing our point of view. It's been very interesting. I want you to understand that next week is Silent Mystics, and Silent Mystics will go into mysticism. It's not just because it's somebody who who has been really working with us on social injustice, it's going to be Silent Mystics on Monday. <laughs> See my evil smile. We will be talking about mysticism. We will be talking about magical events, um, things that can't be explained. And so Comfy Couch may be a little different this week. Shh. Weird dreams. Yes, weird dreams. My gosh, weird, vivid, crazy dreams. I can't even talk about them. They were so weird. So, big deal. If they'll get over it, if they can move on, they can get upset a few. I'm not sure what did, what did I say. <laughs> I probably said something. <laughs> I'm not sure what I said to get you on that one, Debbie, or somebody else did. Yes, they knew I needed to get sleep, Charles, you do. It's so difficult. I I really um, relate to you on that because it, it took me months. It took me a long time to figure out how to get sleep after Steve died. A long time. So, sending you all kinds of healing energy. Please find a way to get some rest. 
It's not, it's not easy. There's, it's just a difficult time. And it, and it's when you're in it, it's just so heavy. And so, um, I don't even know how to describe it. It's, it's a whole different experience when you lose someone that you love. And for the first year, really, and sometimes two and three, <laughs> it gets easier. It does. All right. <clears throat> I used to tell, my mother used to say, I, I think I told you that once, she would close her eyes and I'd say, Mommy, are you asleep? She'd go, no, I'm just resting my eyes. <laughs> That's what I just did for a second. Big breath. It is a difficult, heavy planet today. This is not necessarily that I'm not doing what I need to do for me as much as it is. Yes, I'll go stand in nature. I have been trying to do that. But it's also because we got all this going on. There's so much unrest. There's so many planets in et retrograde. We are so sensitive. Everything about us is becoming more sensitive. Whether we can, we just have to do what we can to try to keep up with it because we are getting huge downloads. We are, we're changing so quickly, more quickly than humanity has ever changed before. Literally, we are getting this, this fast track of growth, spiritual growth. So remember that, yes, we're tired. You need to come here and say, yes, I'm tired today. It's okay, we're working so hard. <laughs> we're doing so much. Of course we're gonna our bodies are gonna have difficulty keeping up sometimes. It's okay. We just take good care of ourselves, drink a lot of water, be easy. Oh, because I get yeah, some people do get it. You're right. You're right. I think it's a misunderstanding, Deborah. People um they think that because it's a live show, it, that's why if I put it on different pages, it, because it's a live show. And I'm responding to, to some of you that they feel like they're being ignored because they don't understand that I can only see the live feed on Enlightened Living. So we have to work on that. We might start to playing the restream or something so that we can, we don't leave anybody out. But it's okay because I feel like this is, um, this is our little group. There's no, um, I don't want it to be clicky and nobody, but anybody that comes here, we communicate directly with. I can, I, um. I think any of us, any one person can only handle so many comments. And if you get so much going on, you, you lose that personal touch. So, yeah, that's what's going on, Deborah. It's okay. <laughs> they just can't, I can't see them. And they think that I'm ignoring them. Let's see, Chetta, nice to see you. Deborah. If a person has dream visitations a lot, will regular dreams dwindle down? I can't, I'm not a dream, I've never been a big dream person. I should be. There's sometimes when I keep my dream journal beside my bed and I really pay attention to my dreams. Um, so I couldn't really tell you for sure if you're getting visitation dreams, if you would have regular dreams. I think that my understanding is is that when we sleep, we're as close to our true selves as ever before, and there's a whole lot of work going on. It's like, it, basically, it's like we let the guard down. That's a better way to put it. The guard is completely down. If you're soundly sleeping, if your guides or angels or loved ones want to communicate with you in some way because your guard is down and your, your um, ego is not blocking out of fear, the messages or the visitations come through. I can only tell you from myself that I had many visitations from Steve after he died. Very clear, definitely visitations, and it didn't really change my regular dreaming. I still had dreams, so I can only tell you from my experience that it didn't didn't change things. I would say that you get the power over that. You get to decide. If you're having so many visitation dreams and, and you're really not getting good rest, it's like you're working 24-7. You're not, doesn't it feel like that? It's like, okay, I'm a medium. I'm open for business during certain hours. And when I go to sleep at night, I really just want my own work. We have so much work to do in our sleep and so much releasing. And if you're not getting that, if, if these visitation dreams are coming to the point where you're just really not getting, having time to do the work that needs to happen in your own sleep, you need to tune it down a little bit, tone it down, ask your angels, say, hey, I need you to feel this for me. I need you to screen my calls. 
I need to actually have some good, solid dream state where things can happen that show me the truth of who I am that helped me to grow. So that's my take on it. I may be seeing it differently than you, but I feel like our dreams are important and sacred, and we need to value those. And okay, sometimes we want to have visitations while we're sleeping. Okay, it's okay. Just limit it. Just say, hey, I can only handle just a little bit of that because I really need that time. That's what I'm, my take on it. I hate these glasses are really dirty. <laughs> ah, let's see, okay, because I can hardly just dream anymore, Deborah, and I'm thinking I'm not getting enough rest. Yes, you need to ask to have that toned down, okay? Ask, ask your guides, your angels, say, hey, I gotta have some rest at night. You can tell, you know, you can talk to the spirits around you. <laughs> Say, I'm off limits. I'm closing down shop. I will talk to you in the morning. I need some rest. Whatever, however you want to handle it. But take control of that situation. Really. Ask for some help. Hmm. I feel like that's part of my problem today. I did sleep for nine hours, but I had a lot of activity last night. And I'm a person that I've cut out of my life was very much a part of my I don't completely cut him out, but um, but he was very much a part of my dreams last night. I think it pulled me into a weird place. Does that make sense? Okay. So what time is it? We're almost up to 10 o'clock. What else do you guys got going? Who's feeling the retrograde? What do you feel? And um, can you give some suggestions? I sit here and talk all the time. How do you handle these things when they happen? How do you handle your time so that you can have time? to just rest and recoup. What kind of suggestions can you make that, that have helped you a lot? I feel like part of me too, as I say that, part of me needs to be to get back to the creative energy. I love to write. I love to be creative. And I haven't been doing enough of that. I've been trying to get down. I've been trying to force myself into a box a little bit, trying to be more business-like and <laughs> trying to build something, which is good. We have to do those things too. but. I am tired. So I gotta find a creative outlet. I gotta play a little bit. I need the Play-Doh. That's really what it is, isn't it? We gotta remember to play. Maybe today we can play. This is called the playground. We're getting busy like little grown-ups again. We've forgotten our inner children who need to have come out and play and enjoy life a little bit. So today we can go to a playground or we can go have some fun. Go back to the pool. Maybe play a little tea party. So I'd like you to start to relax. Let's see. Wendy, I sit out in my garden for a few hours a day while I'm not working. Good idea. I have my water feature that I listen to. So soothing. Excellent. I love how your grounds are, how you've got your little garden set up and your water features. I've been, I'll tell you honestly, I've got this beautiful mountain stream that's right there in the next block. It's not even a full block. There's a house, a row of houses between us. And whenever I go, when I finally pull myself out of, away from my desk, and I got to go someplace, I'm in the car, and I drive by it, and my body just goes, like, magnetically. Like, would you go sit by that water? And I haven't been doing it. So it's probably, when I get done here, I'm going to take that little doggy for a quick walk. We're going to walk down by the water and just stand and breathe for a minute, and then I'll be better. But you're, our bodies are so good at showing us what we need. It's like a pendulum. It's like they go, boom, they pull us. <laughs> they pull us in the direction that we need to be to help us to ground. It's okay to be busy. It's okay to be working at all this awesome stuff that we're working at. Just remember to take that pause sometimes. Just go, the water's right there. All I got to do is walk over to it. It takes me two minutes. And I can stand there for five and feel better. Julie, you go to the pool and float. My gosh, I would love to have a pool. <laughs> I love to float. <laughs> Very good, Scarlett, doing all the things that you've been putting off. Very good. Especially if it's things that I want to paint. How crazy would it be? See that piano behind me? It's just an old piano. It was left here when I moved in. Um, Jim gave it to me, whatever I want to do with it. And I've been looking at these funky designs. <laughs> I've been looking at all these, like, do it. Um, a tree of life on it and make it all colorful and funky. I really do. I want to paint the piano. I know it's beautiful. I love hardwood. I love anything made of wood. And yet this piano is just calling out to me to turn into some kind of crazy, wild, 
beautiful creation. It's like this empty canvas lately. Would you please paint me? So I think I'm going to work on that. Maybe a little at a time, but I want to create something on that. So that's so since I brought that up today, I'm going to go to the craft store as soon as I got time. <laughs> I'm going to buy that paint. We're going to get to work. And I'll show you what it looks like day by day, probably, because it's always right behind me. Gardening, yes. Getting your hands in the dirt is very grounding, isn't it? It's very, very... You can't... I got gardening out here I want to do, too. <laughs> do you see what happens to me? <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm so tired. I got so much to do. And as I'm sitting here talking, I'm like, well, how about if I do this, too? And how about if I do that, too? My little ego does not know when to quit. <laughs> we could, I could just not sleep anymore if I could only get to the place where I just don't sleep. <laughs> It'd be okay. Then I'd have lots of time, right? Play it in here for us. There's not much to play, and I don't know how to play a piano. I have a program to teach me how to play, <laughs> and I haven't found the time to do it yet. <laughs> it's like a $350 online school to learn how to play the piano and it's a really beautiful I've Abby started it and it's really really incredible it works really well it's really a beautiful program and it just sits there on my list of to do's gardening let's see so maybe someday I'll tell you what instead of playing it I'll just paint it and I'll let you see what <laughs> it looks like Maybe somebody else. It needs a little work. It's an old piano. It's been beat up. It needs a little work internally, too. Hi, Faye. Nice to see you. We're going to start. I, I need to excuse myself for one second because I'm all of a sudden it got so hot in here. I don't know if there's angelic energy or what, but my fan's not on, and I'm cooking, so don't go away. Batman would like to speak with you for just a second. There he is. What did he tell you? <laughs> Has he been secretly? Did he tell you some of my most most uh, precious secrets? Batman, have you been good? I'm taking the pause. That fan feels really good. Look at Wendy since you're here. There we go. That's so lovely. It really makes me so happy, Wendy. I'm so grateful to you for sending me that. I don't believe I forgot. I came rushing out here and I forgot the fan. That was my problem. Batman said you need to take a vacation for a week and do everything that makes you happy. Self-love. Awesome. Can I take Jim with me? <laughs> Batman. I'll, Batman goes everywhere with me anyway. But I want to I take my guy too. He and I have not had much time together either. So he works too hard. Pleasure. It's your pleasure, Wendy. It is my pleasure to receive it. I will take more time, Deborah. I will take more time. I can't get a week off right now. My, my good friend, Gerald Ann, is going to come visit for a couple days. Coming up. Two weeks. And only two weeks, so. So we'll have some fun time. I'm going to show her all around these mountains for the little bit of time we got. We're going to get up in the mountains. Hopefully the weather's good. She'll only be here for like a day and a half, but I hope the weather is good and we can get her up and out. If it's not, we're going to get out the rain slickers and the umbrellas, <laughs> and we're going to enjoy this, the sights and go out to the arts and crafts community. If you guys have, know the Gatlinburg area, there is, <clears throat> there's a little community. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> yes, I need to clear. Um, <laughs> there is a little arts and crafts community. It's actually really large. It's the old old Gatlinburg. It's like the old time families, the families that have been here for generations and generations and generations who there's broom makers. I have an oval broom right behind me that Steve bought for me. <clears throat> I have a collection of brooms because I adore brooms. I'm not sure why, <laughs> but I'm a little bit, I think the little witch in me comes out to play and I love brooms, so I collect them. <clears throat> so there's places, there's shops back there where you can actually see them creating their brooms. And when I went to get that oval broom, I told the man that was selling them, I said, I don't want to sweep with it. He said something about how we're going to, which broom to buy by what we want to do with it. I was like, oh no, sir. This is not a broom that's going to be used for sweeping. <laughs> this is a broom that is going to be put on a display because 
I like to collect brooms. And he said, lots of people collect brooms. So it's not just me. It's okay. It's a, it's a work of art to me, these brooms. I'll show you. I'll send a picture of it. It's really beautiful. So um, <clears throat> there's that. There is pottery. Lots of beautiful pottery. There is stained glass. There's Oh, there's a man that creates dulcimers. I've gone to, Steve and I went to his shop when, right, the day that we were married, we stopped at his shop, or it was at least in the week that we were married. <clears throat> he played, <clears throat> I got a beautiful story for you, and I'm still, still got time. He laid out, I don't know if you know what a dulcimer is, it's like the, it's like when the Scots came over into the Appalachian Mountains, they couldn't carry their pianos and things, so they created a lap piano, basically that is like the inner parts of a uh, piano and and they were able to bring that and it lays down on a table mostly you can do it with hammer there's a hammered dulcimer sound that they make or there is um, they just use their fingers or a pick this man does displays downtown all the time he goes into the arts you know he just he's this is his craft he builds dulcimers and I've always wanted a dulcimer I read the favorite song or favorite book when I was a kid was Christy. It was about a school teacher that came into the Appalachian Mountains and taught. And dulcimers were in the book. <laughs> and so I've always wanted a dulcimer. So Steve took me into that shop for that reason. And we, I drooled on those dulcimers. I wanted one so badly. This man laid down a dulcimer and he started showing us how easy it was to play it. And they're very easy to learn to play. And the, the song that he played, and Steve actually stood there and videotaped it, and I wish I could find it, was Love Me Tender. And it was, we had just gotten married, so Love Me Tender became like, that was like, oh my gosh, I would play that song on the dulcimer, and it was, it was just something that reminded me of the year that we got married, that time in the mountains. I came back here two years ago, <clears throat> a little bit less than two years ago. The kids and I came and we stayed for two and a half months in uh, the mountains in North Carolina. And I kept being drawn back over here. <clears throat> a good friend of mine, Shanna, who is also a Facebook buddy, came to visit us with her daughter. And she stayed a couple of times. And on the second time, I brought her over here. And I brought her back into here, <laughs> to where I put his ashes. And when she came back there with me, we both felt him and other energies. She was picking up on Native American er energies too. And it was just this beautiful time of sharing. Like I, Steve has come to her many times. She's very psychic. So she's very connected to Steve too. So going back into that space was really special. It was like he was right there with both of us. She went her way. She's hugging a tree. I went over to where I put his ashes. She helped me to find, by her energy being there, I was able to go right to that place where I left his ashes. After we left there, we were going down the, oh, we went over to the arts and crafts community and we went to that shop and the man played that dulcimer and the first song he played was Love Me Tender. We might cry during this story. And then he said, I got one more song to play. Would you like to hear? I got a new one. And I said, yeah, sure. And he said, it's the new one. It's not really a new song, but Disturbed plays it. What is that song by Disturbed? Song, Sound of Silence? And I think a few of you have heard that story that for a couple months before Steve died, every morning when he was getting ready for work, he would go into the bathroom and he would play. That song would come on the radio, whatever radio station. It was like one of their favorite songs. And it would come on every day while he was in there getting ready for work. And he would turn it up really loud and he would stand in there and sing it very poorly. <laughs> he wasn't much of a singer. He did it every day. So when this man said he was going to sing that or play this song, I was like, oh my gosh. He's done Love Me Tender, and now he's doing Steve's favorite song. And it was all I could do to compose myself, <clears throat> to hold my t myself together while he did it. He did it. We, <laughs> and it was very, very moving. We walked out of there. We got in the car, and we went to go down the street, and I pulled into a grocery store. And when I did it, it had started to rain, and when I did it, I turned around. Shanna and I both turned around and looked, and there was this rainbow that was the most vivid. I have a picture of it somewhere. The most rain, er, most vivid rainbow I have ever seen in my life, right over 
like right down the street from us. You could see the entire thing landing. You could see it landing on the street <laughs> right where the store was. It was like, boom. <laughs> it was like, my gosh. That whole day was so magical. It was like Steve was absolutely just serenading us, giving us gifts that day. It was incredible. She'll still tell you about it. Shanna, I want to get her on my show. I haven't talked her into it yet, but I would love. I think that probably when Geraldine and I are here together, it may happen again. We'll see. It was just an absolutely incredible, magical, mystical, mystical day. So, big story. So I'm still going to get my, <laughs> wherever that started, I'm going to go, we were talking about the arts and crafts community, I'm going to go to this man one of these days, and I'm going to buy one of his handcrafted dulcimers, it's on my list, I feel as if it may be a birthday gift, October 17th, I wanted it when I was here for my birthday, and I didn't do it, because we were in a crowded car, and I, I didn't feel safe trying to transport it, so I got myself a ring made up instead, but I think that maybe this year, now that I live here, it's time to learn how to do that dulcimer. So I'll post that later, maybe. Do you love the sounds of silence, Carol? It's definitely a powerful song, and when Disturbed did it, it's even more powerful. And I've come to the point that I can listen to it now, so we, we do a lot of healing, don't we? A harpsichord, I don't know. Dulcimer, is, it may be like a har harpsichord. It doesn't have any air pushing through it. There's nothing to, like some of these instruments you, you know, you push. This literally is just like the inner workings of, it's more like a harp, I think. Lap harp. I think people have called it that. Where you literally just lay it down on your lap or on a table in front of you and you're just picking it. And it's very easy. He's got a way, one hand can find the chords and the other hand is picking. It's much easier than using a guitar because you don't have to wrap your arm. I have short little hands, so it would be it would work for me. <laughs> so I don't play the piano. I was told and that may be a misnomer. Thank you for bringing that up. When I was a kid, we had a, a babysitter who was. She played the piano. She taught the piano. My sister has long fingers, and she told my sister how great her hands were for playing the piano. And she looked at my little short hands and she said, "Now you're." You're probably never going to be much of a pianist. <laughs> and so I have a uh, falsity inside of me. She told me I couldn't play the piano, so I never did. So I need to work on that. I love it when stuff like that comes up. Deborah, isn't it so awesome how even though our loved ones are on the other side, they still make sure we know they're with us. That's exactly true. He has always been so good about finding ways to show me, even though he is advancing, he's like pure source energy now, there's this part of him that is still very much Steve. He had a very romantic, he was a goober. He really was, he was a total 13 year old <laughs> with his sense of humor and yet he had this side to him that was very romantic and, and incredibly sweet. And he still holds that part of it. And I love when the wind blows and he stands back there. Can you see his cape? The cape is blowing in the wind. Looks real, doesn't it? <clears throat> I, the first Valentine's Day that we had, I was at work. We had only really just met, because we didn't really physically meet one another until December 26, 2009. So February 14th, 2010. I'm at, was it that soon after? It had to be. I was working at, I finally got a job close to him, so I was working at um, the hospital pharmacy in Owensboro, Kentucky. And he called me and said it was it was Valentine's Day. So I went and got his favorite thing, which was M&M's, the pretzel style M&M's. He would eat those like there was no tomorrow. <laughs> and I got him a card. And I go walking upstairs on my break and he's up there at the cafeteria. And as I get up, I see him standing with his back to me. <laughs> And he must have sensed that I was close, and he turned around, and he was holding one red rose, and my heart melted. Hmm, that was it. <laughs> I was like, all right, man. So every year, he would get me, as we stayed together, he had more money at different times, he would get me. I'm sure it was so tight for him then that that one red rose was all he could get. But I kept that rose. I still have it. Um, but I always loved it when he would bring me roses, so... It was, it's always, red roses are very special to me. 
So, let's see. Did Steve come to you right away? My husband waited. He came to me. He knew I was ready. He was there. I, I tell people the second night, I think it was just two days after I went through a really, really low point. I, I really was really hurting. And the first time I experienced him and knew he was there was like two days after. And, and I, I, I'll tell the story so much. I don't want to get into the whole thing. But I, as I was sitting there on my bed, that was the day that I took the dog out for a walk. And it was very dark. And I literally wanted to step in front of a car. For a second, I had this split. Like if the car is coming up over the hill, I could, I could be done. It was that bad. I couldn't handle the pain. It hurt so much. I just couldn't handle it. And it's funny where we go when we're in that much pain. It's like, I just couldn't stand it. But I had the dog with me. There's no way I would have hurt myself with that dog. And there's no way I would have taken myself for my children. I, I knew enough not to do it, but I remember being that low. And so as I came back in, I climbed up. I sat on my bed in our bedroom. His desk was still in there. He'd done, he worked from home. So his big old desk was in the bedroom. And he died in that bed. So it was very emotional for an energetic for someone who is, is uh, sensitive to energy, it was crazy to just sit there. And I walked back in and sat there in the bed, and my head felt like it was going to explode. And all of a sudden, this cool breeze came out of nowhere. It was just like right on my head, right where I needed it. And I literally felt him turn my face. And when I turned my face, the, his desk was there. My, my camera bag was sitting there on the desk. He had just bought me my dream camera. The last gift he gave to me was that camera. It was a DSLR, and he knew how much I wanted one. And he got it for me, and it came. He actually ordered it before his diagnosis. Then it came to me after he'd been diagnosed, and the last walk that we had out in nature with him with a cane was taking that camera out so that I could take some pictures. So that camera meant a lot, and as soon as my face hit that camera, it was like, I'm still here. I'm still here. Don't give up. Take that camera. Get yourself out to the woods. I'll be there with you. And so that that was the first time, and it was only just a couple days, <clears throat> two days after he died. So he probably came to me more quickly. There was times when I would, when I first started trying to sleep without him that I said, would you please curl up with me? Would you be here with me? And I could feel him curl up behind me, like kind of like just rest himself around behind me. So... I know he was there before it, but that was the first true awareness, was that night. Lots of beautiful stories. We, we could, I could sit here and talk all day about the experiences that Steve and I had after he died. And yet, I think I'll leave it for Thursday. That's what Thursday night is all about. Forever after that, Steve is my guest. It's his show. The Batman will be with us. I don't know how he's going to manifest himself. <laughs> it may be some channeling. He's He's channeled through me before. There may be just a lot of stories, there may be a few tears, a lot of emotion, but it will be raw and it will be all about all these beautiful stories. So that's just a taste of them. So Carol Allen, uh, Bill gave me one red silk rose and sent and said he wanted oh wait, said he wanted one that would never die. I still have it. That's beautiful. That is really beautiful. These these people so let's go ahead. We got about 15 minutes. I've been running late. I got a class at 11, so I can't run too late today. So let's get serious about some play time, some easy time. I would like to give you some time to unload for just a few minutes. Okay? We all need to. I need it too. So we're going to call in Spirit. We're calling in Archangel Michael to protect us in our meditation time. And then I would like you to visualize whoever it is that you'd like to pull in with you today. Let's have some play time. It could be your inner child that needs a break. <clears throat> it could be a loved one that you'd like to spend some time with. I feel like I would love to have some time with Steve. And I'd like to share him with you today. So I'm calling him in. Little bat signal. There we go. Go ahead and start centering your energy. Put your feet on the floor, feel grounded. And I'm asking that Steve would share out that beautiful energy of his today. <clears throat> Just 
Take a big breath. It's a nice shift of energy already. Big breath. Hold it for a little bit. Let it go. <clears throat> I'm gonna. We have some major clearing to do because this throat is crazy. A little bit of help from the water. <clears throat> All right. Let's do a clearing. So I see the hand of God. I see source energy, the creator, whoever you'd like to call. I see this beautiful hand coming down from the from right above you. It's not far. Our creator is so close. Right on the top of your head. Feel the warmth, feel the heat. And that gentle even though the hand never physically touches, you can feel a pressure on the top of your head, just light. And let's sit here in that. It's like a waterfall of energy. <clears throat> I love the way this is happening these days. This beautiful waterfall of pure source energy that goes down through every single chakra, clearing away blocks, cords, attachments, Anything that is not here for our highest of good, let's release as we're sitting in this. Cleaning away those things that no longer serve us. Releasing any cords to those people who have chosen to be difficult, to be hateful, to be distant. Letting go of the energies of those who no longer belong in our inner circle. You have new connections. You have uh, but it keep coming. There's new energies coming into your life, new opportunities. And in those new opportunities, sometimes those that we love, they'll fall away for a little while to create space for newness. We can only stretch ourselves so thin. So we need to let those that are no longer serving our dreams, our purposes, that are no longer on the path that we have chosen, to step away, to go down their own path. Just let them go. Watch them walk away, it's okay. Because in that letting go of those that are no longer in the space that we need them to be in, no longer understanding or, it goes so much bigger. Our, our human minds cannot understand. And yet, we're being given this team of people around us not just a spiritual team, but those who are supposed to be in our lives who will help us to expand and to grow. And we have pre-planned this. This is your plan. So as those step away from you, know that they're only creating space for the newness, for someone new to step in who will fill that space and who will assist you. Lots of energy in the throat space right now. There's a lot of truth coming to you. There's so much. That throat chakra is so powerful. And keeping it clear allows you to hear your truth in ways that you've never heard it before. It allows you to speak your truth so that others can find you. Allow that clearing, stretching your throat space, allowing it to just flow. Still, some of you are receiving some clearing work in the third eye. I feel some heat on my forehead. Energy's flowing into the heart space. Fill up your heart, fill up your lungs. That Holy Spirit, higher self that is within you seems to want to come out to play. So let's just fill up those, those hearts right now and let them come out and stand beside you. like a bubble. You get really big and it pops right out and it's standing there beside you. Healing angels on the left hand side. On the right. I had to feel it out. There is a healing energy on the right hand side. Whoever you've called in. For me it's always Jesus. 
that is my ascended master that I choose to relate to. And on the left is my Holy Spirit higher self, the same for you. And up above is pure source energy. And you're in this tent, this beautiful pyramid of energy right now. I can see. Ah, beautiful. Rest into it. We're not going to work too hard today. Just rest into that beautiful energy. So much love on the heart space. Healing to the heart. Each one of you is receiving a rose right now. You choose your color. Each one of you gets to hold this beautiful gift. It's as if Steve is coming around. Here's one for you. Here's one for you. Here's one for you. <laughs> if you'd like that flower, just receive. Incredible energy in the heart moving down into the solar plexus. Remember to breathe. Just to let go, release your hands, let, your, let yourself completely relax. Nothing is taken from you that you need to hold on to. You can rest into that and trust this energy. Lots of energy in the solar plexus, clearing away the clutter, creating this beautiful space that you can go back to anytime you'd like. Envision that space right now. Envision yourself in this beautiful little room. All of your treasures are there. You've been storing them up all of your life. As a little girl, there was funny little treasures. Some of you had a collection of stones or a collection of butterflies or Barbie dolls or whatever you like to save up. It's all in there. All of those memories, all of those beautiful times as a child. There's a few things in there that you can release. Look around a little bit. Is there anything there that brings pain or, or heaviness? Or anything dark? Let it go right now. Hold it up. The angels will swoop in and take it away. Anything that holds your energy field down, holds your vibration down. We want to release. We're moving into a higher plane of existence. We can't go there as long as we hold on to that stuff. So just release. Letting go. Trusting. Anything for me, anything that is lower vibrational, if I don't even recognize it, if it's there and it's holding me down, I ask to have it severed and released right now. Nice lift. Excellent. Big breath. down into the second clearing away any clutter there from old relationships any mother energy that doesn't feel pure and clean release it now let yourself feel safe there that's the womb it's like a newborn baby resting there we want to keep that area nice and clear down into the root excellent there is such beautiful energy flowing all the way up and down right now Clearing away any blocks, cords, attachments. Like little fans, these chakras spinning in two different directions. Lighting up. Sending out beautiful healing energy to every single cell of the body. Picture these fans as they're blowing. It's like my fan that I turned on a little while ago. It's spinning, spinning, creating a breeze. Pushing out this beautiful healing energy to all the different areas of your body. Each one of them, you're, you've got all of these little fans inside of you, and they're so effective. The energy goes down through your legs, down into your feet, down into the earth, stretching those beautiful roots of yours, creating a sense of home, a sense of peace, rootedness, groundedness. And as the energy goes down into the earth, the earth is thanking you for remembering to send your energy down in. And as you do that, it's coming back up through, all recycled, ready to energize your body, to pick up your health, to allow you to feel more vibrant and alive. Reminding you that right now, as you take a big breath, that's your first breath again. 
Take a big breath as if it's your first breath as a newborn baby. It's all brand new. You're all brand new inside again. Clean and pure, ready to begin building again to create from this beautiful energy. Right back up, a little bit of a headache. All this energy is really flowing right now. If you feel lightheaded when this is done, if you're feeling a little bit shaky, a little off, this is a powerful energy. Drink a lot of water, take a rest for a few minutes, go outside, put your feet on the ground, on the earth. The energy is flowing right back up through the crown right now. Envision a beautiful, healthy, strong earth. <clears throat> Envision every single person, every blade of grass, every animal, every living thing, every rock. It's all alive. Envision this beautiful energy just circling around the earth. Green, healing. That's lighting up. And that's you. You have this beautiful energy that is flowing through you. It's not your own. You're not giving away anything that is yours. This is energy. As you've opened up your energy centers, it flows through you and out into the earth and to those who need it. You can envision anyone that you want to receive specific energy at this time. We continue to send energy to Ruth Bradford, who is greatly in need at this time, to each one of you. It's going throughout your bodies, through those that you love, through your children, your grandchildren, aunts, uncles, cousins, mothers, fathers, anywhere that you want it to go. Holding that energy. Creating a powerful grid is what I just heard. Each one of us together, all the way around the planet, we're here for a reason. Each one of us has a, a grid point, a place where the energy can flow, and we're all connected. One last final big breath, and as you do that, pull your Holy Spirit higher self back within your heart space. Nice, really nice. And then we're asking Archangel Michael to wrap each one of us in a beautiful bubble of protection today. Only love exists here, only love can enter. You get to choose what comes into that space. In your dream state, they're reminding you to wrap yourself in this bubble. At, when you go to sleep at night, to ask as you're resting that you would be safe and protected, that your dreams would only come those that are good for you, that will help you in your growth, that will help you to relax and enjoy your rest. Anything else cannot come into that bubble. Big breath and count to five for me as you come back up out. One, two, three, four, five. Very good, very good. Start to shake it out. Allow yourself to come back up out. How are you feeling now? If you got water close by, take a big drink of water. Stretch your body a little bit, cross it over. It feels so good to cross our energy, get our, ourselves all balanced. It is late. Deborah, I'm glad that you joined us. Thank you. I see that you had to leave and that's perfectly okay. Oh, let me see what she had to say. My husband came to me in a dream first, then a year and some months later, a three-year-old grandson was washing dishes and he appeared to me right next to him and I heard him say, do you, do you need some help there, little buddy? And he winked at me. That's adorable. That's really sweet, Deborah. Thank you for sharing that. You guys, you all received a rose from Steve today. A little gift just to say your loved ones are close. We're always close. Don't forget to talk to us. Don't forget to create space. I hope that you all have a beautiful, beautiful day. Some of you, I think, are still in La La Land. <laughs> I got to get going. I got a class here in just a little while. I love you so much. Take excellent care of yourselves. Yeah, read that book. Go read that book, Scarlet. Read it with the energy of just releasing and letting go and let the book speak to you in whatever way it needs to. It's all completely personalized to whoever reads it. Have a great day, Charlie. It's nice to see I'm so glad that you joined us.
take good care of yourselves today. I love you so much. I will be around. Check in. Let's see, today is what? Tuesday. No more shows this afternoon, just a class. But if anyone needs any, if you know anyone that needs a private session, anything, send them my way. I'm doing those more and more, and I'm enjoying them, and they're becoming so powerful. You can't ever beat that one-on-one. -on -one. So take good care of yourselves today. You're so welcome, Wendy. Thank you. Charles has given love to all. Scarlett. I'm sure Paul will be screaming at me. <laughs> You'll hear a little bit of Paul through that book, for sure. Take good care of yourselves. Jetta, thank you so much. I think you guys took a little while to come back out of it, didn't you? It was a heavy, powerful clearing today. So I hope that you feel that energy that's flowing through you right now. Enjoy your day. I love you guys. I'll catch you tomorrow morning. Bye now.